Okay, today I'm going to be shining my 1400 milliwatt super strong blue laser on black 2.0, the blackest black on the market, and lit the brightest paint on the market. Okay, so this laser pointer here is 7,500 times brighter than sunlight of the same diameter. So basically what that means, if I had a little circle of sunlight here, this little circle of laser right next to it would be 7,500 times more intense. Even just a normal hand pointer that you use in presentations is 27 times brighter than sunlight. So that's why they tell you to never shine lasers at your eye. Even with a handheld laser pointer, you can blind yourself, but especially with one of these, you would instantly be blinded and sear your eye. So the reason why laser light can get so bright like that is because of an interesting fact about photons. So photons are different than other particles like electrons or protons or neutrons. For electrons, protons, and neutrons, they can never be in the same place at the same time and in the same state. And so there's a finite amount that you can pack together in one spot. But for photons, it's a different story. Not only can you pack an infinite amount of photons into a tiny area, but when the photons are around each other, they actually start to take on the same properties. So photons actually prefer to be around each other. So it's kind of like the opposite of the Pauli exclusion principle. And so that's how lasers can be so bright. So a short version of how a laser works is basically you have a mirror at either end and you bounce the light inside of it off of those mirrors a lot of times. And because photons like being around each other and they like being in the same state, if you keep passing them by each other enough times, then statistically after a while, you'll have a bunch of photons that all have the same direction and all have the same frequency. So you're stimulating the material inside of the laser to emit photons that have the same direction and the same frequency. So that's why laser light doesn't spread out like a flashlight because all of the photons are going the same direction and they have exactly the same frequency. And even all of their peaks and troughs all line up together at the same way. And so it doesn't spread out and go different directions. So first we'll shine it on black 2.0, which is the blackest paint on the market. It absorbs almost all the light that touches it. And then we'll shine it on lit, which is the brightest paint on the market. It's so bright that it actually gives off light. So it's a glow in the dark pigment. And then at the end, I'm gonna mix them both together and then shine the light on it and see what happens. Could get something weird that happens there because it's gonna be a lot of energy that it's absorbing into the black but it'll also have a lot of light to charge the lit. So I don't know if it'll charge it and start on fire or what will happen. So that one will be a cool one to check out at the end. So this black 2.0 is really cool because it almost doesn't look like I'm holding a sphere at all. It looks like I'm holding a flat circle. Okay, so let's see what happens now when I shine my 1,400 milliwatt laser on this ping pong ball coated with black 2.0. Okay, here we go. Whoa. Whoa. It like shoots out the smoke. Look at that. It doesn't actually start on fire though. So it definitely is burning a hole right through it. So it burned a hole right through the ping pong ball. <coughs> now let's see what happens when we shine the laser on lit. So I already showed in a previous video that due to the wave particle duality of light, you have to have a wavelength of light that's shorter than the wavelength of light that the glow in the dark is emitting. So blue light will work, red light would not. A, a red laser light, no matter how strong, would not be able to stimulate this glow in the dark material. But this is a blue laser, so let's see what happens. Start it here. Whoa, that is bright. Look how awesome that is. <laughs> That's so cool. Whoa. That is crazy. Look how bright that is. 
Holy cow. Whoa. It's like I have a bright marker writing on it. <laughs> that is so cool. That is awesome. Okay, my new goal is to have a chalkboard made of this that I write on it with a laser. <laughs> okay, so make your vote whether you like black 2.0 versus the laser or lit versus the laser. Now let's see what happens when we combine the two. Okay, now let's mix in our lit. Okay, now finally, let's see what happens with the mixed black 2.0 and lit. Okay, three, two, one. Whoa, look at that. Even though it's black, it's lighting it up. So it is lighting it up, but it's actually not lighting it up that well. If I just use a black light, a very dim black light lights it up extremely well. <laughs> so the reason this is able to light it so much better is because this is ultraviolet light. So it has a lot more energy to knock more electrons up to the higher energy state before they fall back down and re-emit the light. Whereas this blue laser light, although it's much more intense, each individual photon doesn't have as much energy to knock electrons up to the higher energy state. Okay, now let's see what happens if I leave it in one spot. <laughs> so wherever I leave it, it starts to burn and it doesn't glow right in the middle there. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and you can leave me any comments or questions or suggestions that you have in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.